the Lux Summer Theater. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Salt, brings you the Lux Summer Theater, starring Joseph Cotton in Romance to a Degree. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Don Wilson. Well, vacation time is about half over, and I wonder how many of you are still contemplating a trip to Hollywood. In tonight's play, we'd like to tell you about a young man who came to our glamorous city one summer to study literature. He also receives a first-hand opportunity to study some of our more fabulous citizens. And as the star of this romantic comedy, we have that excellent actor, Joseph Cotton. Oh, but just a minute. Here's Francis Scully waving a letter at me. Who's the letter from, Francis? A friend of mine who's on a vacation, Don. And listen to this postscript. Thanks loads for putting that box of Lux Flakes into my suitcase. My nylons would be lost without it. Yes, smart women know Lux Flakes Care is real stocking-saving magic. Lux Flakes Care is so soft and mild. It actually protects stocking elasticity, doubles stocking life. It's just like getting an extra pair of stockings for every pair you buy. So don't risk your stockings to harsh wash day products. Give your nylon special care with safe Lux Flakes. Gentle Lux Flakes care cuts stocking runs in half. Makes your nylons last twice as long. So get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. Safe Lux Flakes are recommended by 96% of stocking manufacturers and guaranteed safe by Lieber Brothers Company. And now, Joseph Cotton, starring in Kathleen Height's delightful story, Romance to a Degree. The Westways bus left Kansas City bound for Los Angeles and all intervening stops Friday morning at 9 o'clock. At 2 o'clock that afternoon, it stopped for five minutes in the elm-shaded coolness of Middleton, Kansas. A tall young man in a freshly laundered seersucker suit got aboard, selected a seat by the window on the shady side of the bus, and after waving farewell to his mother, settled down to his reading. His name, William Spring Smith. His reading, English Literature, Volume 1, to Dryden, and Homer's The Iliad. At 6 o'clock that evening, the bus stopped for three minutes at Hooker, Oklahoma. A pretty young girl in a crisp summer cotton got aboard, selected a seat next to a young man in a rumpled seersucker suit, waved her farewells, and settled down to her reading. Her name, Jenny Stewart. Her reading, half a dozen movie magazines. That was Friday. This is Saturday morning. Pardon me. Huh? You, uh, read all the time, don't you? Uh Uh-huh. You're, uh, not enjoying the scenery at all, then, are you? Uh Uh-uh. Then you probably wouldn't mind if we changed seats, would you? Uh Uh-uh. Okay, then, let's. Hmm. Come on, your turn. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, don't sit down yet. I've got a slide in front of you. Oh, this is fine. Well, go ahead. You can sit down now. Mm. There now. This is much better. You can read and I can enjoy the scenery. Uh, Did you say something? Huh? I'm sorry. I thought you said something. I said quite a few things, but you've been so wrapped up in your reading you haven't noticed anything else. Oh, this is just a little escape reading for the trip. I was reviewing the mythological interpretations of Beowulf. Oh? 
It's good exercise every once in a while, pitting the arguments of Mullenhoff and Campbell on the one side against Chambers and Lawrence on the other. Sounds like fun. No, it's pretty exciting, all right. I happen to hold with Chambers and Lawrence, but uh, there's good room for speculation on either position. That's the beauty of it. Oh, you bet it is. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, sorry, my name's Smith. William Sprang Smith. Well, Mr. Smith, my name's Jenny Stewart, and I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Really? Well, if you're interested, Miss Stewart, I'd be glad to enlighten you. Oh, no, me. don't. Look, I, I don't want to be rude, but I'm just busting to talk to somebody. Bursting? Hmm? Bursting to talk with someone, not busting. Well, now I guess I know what I'm doing, and I'm busting. Well, if you prefer. You'll have to forgive me. I'm so used to correcting my students. Uh, you're a teacher? Uh, professor, an associate professor, actually, at Middle College. Never heard of it. Middle College, Middleton, Kansas, founded in 1873. Kansas? <laughs> and here I was about to get impressed with you. I'm from Oklahoma. Hooker, Oklahoma. That's in the panhandle. I know. Well, what are you uh, busting to tell someone? <laughs> about me. I've lived in Hooker all my life. And about a month ago, I was walking along the street with a girlfriend, and this man I'd never seen came up to me, and he says, You're beautiful. Just like that. I'll be darned. Yeah. Oh, I walked right on, of course, but it seemed like everywhere I'd be after that, he'd be there, too. And finally, we sort of got to talking and all, and it turns out he's a, he's a talent scout from Hollywood, and to make a long story short, I'm going out there and be a movie star. Well, it's a small world. I'm going to Hollywood, too. I knew it. The minute I set eyes on you, I said to myself, he looks just like Joseph Cotton. Do I? The spitting image. Who's Joseph Cotton? Oh, silly, as if you didn't know. That's funny. Everyone in Middleton says I resembled Mother. <laughs> and, and the spring side of the family, I don't remember any Cottons on either side of the family. Joseph Cotton is a movie star. Oh, Oh, well, I never go to the movies. That is not much, maybe once a year, not over that. Oh, I see everything that comes to town and drive up to Liberal or down to Guyman whenever the bills change there. Uh, what are you going to Hollywood for if you're not in the movies? Well, to study for my degree, my Ph.D. in English. I've enrolled in the summer school at UCLA. Oh, well, maybe you'll go to the movies more often when I'm a big star. Maybe. I used to go when Aunt Lily was in pictures. You have an aunt in the movies? Aunt Lily, L Lily Spring. She still lives in Hollywood. Lily Spring. I never heard of her. Well, she hasn't made a picture recently. I guess Aunt Lily hasn't really done a lot in movies since they discovered talkies. It was this remark that closed the conversation and generally served to underscore a basic incompatibility between the seat companions. Jenny Stewart was born four years after the advent of talking pictures. Lily Spring, the mythological interpretations of Beowulf and the advanced English study of William Spring Smith left her quite cold, even if Professor Smith was the spitten image of Joseph Cotton. On the other hand, Professor Smith welcomed the return to his reading, only vaguely mindful that the talent scout had made a small point when he looked at Jenny and said, you're beautiful. And so the ride went, from Albuquerque to Gallup to Flagstaff, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino, and finally, Hollywood. Well, we made it, Miss Stewart. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we certainly did. Well, do you see your friend anywhere, that talent scout? Uh, no. No, I don't. Oh, but he'll be here, all right. Mr. Meston promised me back in Hooker he'd be here. Hmm. Of course, he, he might be tied up, but... Oh, I know he'd send a chauffeur or something to meet me. Well, I'll just wait with you until he does show up. Oh, no, 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 no. You run along to Aunt Lily. I'll be just fine. J just fine. Well, all right. I'll be at the YMCA for a few days. You know where you'll be staying? Uh, one of the big hotels, probably. Uh, Mr. Meston's just taking care of everything for me. Well, good luck with your new career, Miss Stewart. <laughs> and happy Ph.D. to you, too, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Stewart. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Spring 
Stephen. Hello, this... What did you say? I said clearly and distinctly, Spring Haven. <laughs> Whom are you calling? I, 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 I must have the wrong number. I was calling Miss Lily Spring. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Miss Spring's residence. Whom shall I say is calling? Oh. Oh, well... Will you, will you be kind enough to tell Miss Spring that her nephew, William Spring Smith, is on the line? Uh, William Spring Smith. One moment, please. Oh, Aunt Lily's doing all right. Willie, Willie Smith, where are you? Oh, I'm right here, Aunt Lily, here in a phone booth at the YMCA. But where? Where? In Hollywood, right here in Hollywood. Oh, I don't believe it. Is your mother with you? Not in the YMCA. <laughs> Mother's back in Kansas. Oh, Oh, I see. Well, now, you must come out here. You, you really must, uh, but you can't. Oh? You understand now, don't you, Willie? I, I want you to come right out here and stay with me. Uh, but you can't. Well, I... I just wanted to say hello and tell you Mother sends her best and... We must have a good talk, a good long talk right away. And I insist that you stay with me. But, uh... But I can't. I couldn't be more embarrassed. My house is simply crammed with guests. So you can't stay here uh, just yet. But soon, Willie. Oh, very soon. Uh, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow's fine. We'll uh, lunch at the Derby and we'll talk everything over. That's very nice. It's quite nice. At noon tomorrow, then, the Brown Derby in Hollywood. Yes, Aunt Lily. Now, uh, you, you won't be lonely till then. And you'll be uh, a good boy. Oh, I'm never lonely, Aunt Lily. I have my books. Uh, you have your what? My books. Say, you are a good boy, aren't you? <laughs> oh, but no matter. We'll do something about that, too. Aunt Lily. Till tomorrow noon, Willie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Lily. Well, I wonder what kept her out of talking pictures. <laughs> can't get over how you've grown, Willie, and what a really attractive young man you've turned out to be. I've been admiring your tan. Oh, that. Oh, well, I, I don't work at it especially. I think after you've lived out here as long as I have, you just turn brown to keep the Chamber of Commerce happy. <laughs> oh, but never mind about me now. I want to know about you. Well... You teach at college, don't you? Yes, English. And you're out I... here to get your Ph.D. Well, I've come to study toward it. It takes a while to get a Ph.D. Now, this summer, you I... You know got... something? You're the picture of Joseph Cotton. <laughs> That's what Miss Stewart said. Who's Miss Stewart? Oh, just a girl on the bus coming out. She's beautiful. She's going to be a movie star. Why, Willie Spring Smith. And I thought you just made friends with books. She just sat next to me on the bus. Oh, well, I can't tell you how delighted I am. A beautiful girl interested in you. Ah, oh, and you like her, I can tell. She just sat next to me on the bus. I'll be honest with you, Willie. Living with your mother the way you do since your father died and reading her letters of how your whole life is your book. I've been worried sick about you. Oh, but now, this lovely Miss Stewart and you... Aunt Lily, she just sat next to me on the bus. <laughs> as good a beginning as any. I met my first husband on the covered wagon. You're not that old. <laughs> hmm? You're not that old. It's the picture. The epic picture of the early 20s, Willie. Oh, I had a substantial part, if you'll remember. I saw it 14 times, but I don't remember Uncle John in the picture. Oh, oh, he, he wasn't in the picture. He was in charge of the horses. <laughs> oh, a tall, lean, raw-boned... Whoa! I think we're attracting attention, Aunt Lily. John always did bring out the beast in me. <laughs> oh, my. I guess I'll miss him all my life. Is he, is he dead? Oh, he'll never be dead. He's made a career out of horses and marrying pretty girls. Tall, lean, raw bone. Aunt Lily. Whoa! <laughs> hey, 
Everyone back in Middleton remembers you, how famous you are and how wealthy. Oh, well, I guess that's your mother's doing, Willie. Although I must admit, with all my enterprises, uh, I am loaded. <laughs> mother's awfully proud of you, Aunt Lily. The whole town is why they know as much about that big house you live in as, as if it were on Jefferson Street right there in Middleton. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's the way hometowns are, you know. You're, you're always famous in your own hometown. Uh, they really remember me, do they? I'll say they do. Why, just last year... Did didn't Mother write you? They changed the name of the old Princess Theater to the Lily Spring Theater. Oh, bless them. I hope I never do anything to disappoint them. Oh, they're wonderful people back in Middleton. I think it's the best place in the world to live. Then you keep right on living there. <laughs> oh, I will. Someday maybe I... Maybe I'll be dean of the college like Dad was, and then... That's funny. What, Willie? Over there, across the restaurant, see? Where? That girl in the blue dress, just sliding into a booth with that uh, tall fellow. Girl in the blue dress? I... Oh, why? That's my Gordon with her. That's Miss Stewart. Say, she is beautiful. And if Mike's her agent, she'll probably become a star. Oh, I've known him since he was a boy out here. Well? Well? Go on over and see her. No, no, she's busy, and I... Well, I don't want to go over, that's all. Willie. Honest Aunt Lily, she just sat next to me on the bus. <laughs> After lunch, William Spring Smith promised Aunt Lily he'd stay with her at Spring Haven as soon as her guests left. The next few days were busy ones. William enrolled in UCLA and began a pattern of taking courses by day and studying hard by night. Jenny Stewart? <laughs> Why, she was just the girl who sat next to him on the bus. He never gave her a conscious thought. But something made him close his books early some evenings. A restlessness that sent him out of the YMCA, usually in the direction of Hollywood Boulevard. And there, with thousands of other visitors, he walked the midway of movie town. He didn't know it yet. But in the midst of all those people, William Spring Smith was lonely. Hey, you, cousin, wait for the light to change before you start across there. Oh, oh, sorry. Thanks. Hey, hey. Get the picture? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That's, a, that's very friendly of you. Are you kidding? Well, thanks anyway. No big thing. Lights changed, cousin. You can go now. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking. My fault. I... Why, it's Mr. Smith. Miss Stewart. Mr. Smith. It's, oh, it's so nice to see well, it's you. It's nice to see you, Miss Stewart. Of all the people in the world. Imagine running into you this way. <laughs> hey, cousin. Huh? The light. It changed again. Oh, yes, it has. Thanks very much. No big thing. <laughs> I guess we'd better get out of the middle of the street. Yes, come on. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I can't get over it. Literally bumping into you. Of all the people in the world. That's what I mean. Oh, uh, donut shop here. How about a bite? Wonderful idea. That booth ahead all right? Mm, fine. Well, I, I really couldn't eat much. I had such a large dinner. Just coffee, then? Oh, I'll eat a couple of donuts just to keep you company. Help you? Yes, thanks. The lady will have uh, coffee and two donuts. There are three for a dime. Coffee and three donuts. <laughs> I'll, uh, oh, bring me the same, I guess. Plain? Plain. One chocolate, one coconut, and one cinnamon. <laughs> I've eaten here before. Oh, plain. Mm-hmm. You paying for this? Certainly. Okay. <laughs> Peculiar question. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 pardon me. I guess I've just had too much Hollywood nightlife. <laughs> You're enjoying yourself here, aren't you, Miss Stewart? Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes, indeed. It's, it's so exciting, and everybody's been so... Oh, 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 oh,
such a whirl. I... Oh, 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 my goodness, I didn't realize that. I was so... Uh, I you, you... <laughs> you've got me to, I guess. Uh, 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 I say you've got... Uh, Miss Stewart. Uh, Miss Stewart. There you go. Shh, shh, shh. Hmm? She's asleep. Hey. Hey, none of that. Come on, lady. Come on. Don't worry, I'll leave her alone. She's just sleeping. Okay, bud. Be my guest. You wake her up. But get her out of here. And tell her she can't sleep in here every night. <laughs> Oh, Don, I want to ask you something. What do you consider to be a girl's best friend? Well, now, let's see. Man's best friend is his dog. So I suppose a girl's best friend would be, uh... Oh, give up, Don. A girl's best friend is diamonds. <laughs> you remember Lorelei's famous line, and gentlemen prefer blondes. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. I certainly do, Francis. <laughs> well, Marilyn Monroe plays that famous gold digger in the new 20th Century Fox Technicolor picture now showing in both New York and Hollywood. And can you imagine Marilyn covered with shimmering gems, wearing black net opera hose against a red background? And Jane Russell doing a burlesque routine. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of the action is laid aboard a huge luxury liner. Jane Russell, as her educated companion, manages to get into a lot of trouble, too. But Marilyn ends up with diamonds. <laughs> and I hear one of the girls gets stuck in a porthole. <laughs> oh, Marilyn does, Don. And a six-year-old lad pulls her out. <laughs> you know, Francis, I'm still thinking about that line, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Personally, I'd say Lux Toilet Soap is a girl's best friend. It's important for a girl to be so, well, irresistible... But a man just wants to give her diamonds, and a lovely complexion is one of the best come-ons I know. Well, Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell certainly have nice complexions. And lots of nice lux in their dressing rooms, too. Well, like most Hollywood screen stars, they know the importance of daily lux care to keep one's complexion looking its very best. A daily lux facial is so quick and easy, too. Oh, it certainly is, Don. You just cream in the lux lather, rinse warm, splash cold. Sounds very interesting, Francis. Try Lux tomorrow and see if you don't agree with Marilyn Monroe, Jane Russell, and nine out of ten screen stars. They believe Lux is as nice and gentle a soap as you can buy. Now, act two of Romance to a Degree, starring Joseph Cotton as William. Five days ago, when they arrived in Hollywood, Professor William Spring Smith of Middleton, Kansas, and Jenny Stewart of Hooker, Oklahoma, were two bright young people, each in his own fashion, determined to reconquer the West. Now they are two bewildered young people, seated on a bench at a bus stop at Hollywood and Vine. He's right. I have slept in the donut shop every night until they wake me up and ask me to leave. But why? They say it's bad for business. No, no, I mean, why must you sleep there? What about that talent scout? Mr. Meston, he never did meet me at the bus station. I've tried every way I know, but, but I can't find anybody by what with that name in Hollywood anywhere. That's funny. Mr. Smith? Yes? Do you think Mr. Meston is fictitious? I'm not sure I understand. I mean, all those things he said to me back home about him being a talent scout and making me into a movie star and all that. I don't know. I guess there are men who do things like that. Boy, he sure didn't seem fictitious back in Hooker. Yes, well, what are you going to do? You, you can't go on being thrown out of donut shops every night. Have you got any money? I don't even have any talent. I've seen all kinds of agents. Even Mike Gordon. He's one of the best. Well, that's what Aunt Lily says, too. Oh, he was so nice to me. I pestered him so much, he finally took me to the Brown Derby for lunch. It's the only really good meal I've had. Oh, poor Jenny. And after lunch, he told me to go back to Hooker like a good little doll. Doll? That's Hollywood for girl. Oh. Mr. Smith? Hmm? You called me Jenny. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I did. Oh, don't be sorry. I liked it, William. 
Say, I know I know what to do about you. Where's your luggage? In a locker at the bus station. Why? I, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Think of what? Aunt Lily. I'll take you to Aunt Lily's and she'll fix everything. Oh, Aunt Lily. For a minute there, I thought you were going to be fictitious like Mr. Meston. No, no, that's not going to work out. It's it's too late to bother Aunt Lily at night. I, oh. Oh, I, I know. I'll take you to the Y. William. Uh, WCA, it's for girls. <laughs> I know. Uh, that's Middleton for dolls. Good evening, miss. No men allowed. She's a girl. Hmm, so she is. Can she talk? Of course she can talk. Say something, Jenny. Hello. Very good. She wants a room. A name, please? William Spring Smith. <laughs> Her name. Jenny. Young man? Yes, miss. Go home. <laughs> William Spring Smith spent a fitful night at the YMCA. When sleep failed to come, he turned to Chaucer. When the liquid smoothness of the Chaucerian stanza disappointed, he tried to find challenge in his paper on the Iliad. But it was no use. For the first time in all his 30 years, William Spring Smith turned to his book friends and found them lacking. By morning, his resolve was firm. And he took it with him to breakfast with Jenny. The more I think about it, Jenny, the more I think that agent was right. You should go back to Hooker like a good little doll, a uh, girl. I'm too much trouble to you, aren't I? Oh, it isn't that. It's just that... I am uh, too much trouble. I know I am. Last night you said you'd fix everything with your Aunt Lily, and now you've thought it over, and I'm just too much trouble. Oh, I called her this morning. She's out for the day, and I'll call her later, but... Well, it, 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 it's my work, Jenny. After all, I came here to study and work and... Tell me about your work, will you? No, it wouldn't interest you. It's just my work. But I'm very interested. Really, I am. I mean, it's nice to know that something's going well with someone. Please tell me. Well, <clears throat> I'm writing this paper, a critique, actually, on Homer's Iliad. Homer's what? The Iliad by the ancient Greek poet Homer. Oh, of course. You see, everyone knows it as a classic heroic epic. Common talk. Yes. Yes, it is. But in my critique, I take the position that Homer's characters are as worthy of liter literary immortality as the excellence of the form of the heroic epic itself. They're real characters, huh? Exceptionally real. I hold that they need not be confined to a specific time or place. And to substantiate this position, I'm suggesting a method of handling the Iliad in modern form in the belief that the characters will sustain today, divorced, of course, from their mythological implications. Maybe you're right. I think I am. <laughs> At any rate, it's, it's an exciting assumption. I mean, maybe you're right. I should go back to Hooker. Oh, are we back there? William, I never know what you're talking about. You make me feel so dumb. Stupid. William! <laughs> I mean, stupid's a better word in that construction than, than dumb. I'll be dumb if I want to. It isn't bad enough that I haven't any money or any talent or even any friends out here. You've got to come along and make me feel inferior. Uh, Jenny, I don't mean to do that. Please, Jenny, don't cry. I will cry. I like to cry. Don't, I, I don't know what to do when you cry. I, I don't know what to do anyway. Leave me alone. Jenny. Go on. Go be pals with that Homer character. All right, I will. Oh, don't leave me, William. Please don't leave me. Now, listen to me. I've got a class this morning and one this afternoon. Oh. I'll tell you this, young lady. Nothing, nothing's going to interfere with my work. No amount of histrionics, no flood of tears. Nothing. Is 
expensive to rent a car like this, William? No, not when I get my deposit back. <laughs> I'm so ashamed carrying on that way and taking you from your classes. It's all right, Jenny. Just, just don't cry anymore. I won't, William. I promise. And you really are going back to Hooker tonight, aren't you? Yes, William. Well, now I've shown you Aunt Lily's house. What else would you like to see? Mm, such a big, gracious home. Uh, Spring Haven, is that what she calls mm. it? Aunt Lily's really done all right. I guess she could still be a big movie star if she wanted to be. A big star. Oh, William. Now, Jenny, you promised. I know. I know. I, I won't cry anymore. But it's... It's awful to be a has-been at 21. Oh, that's ridiculous. You're not a has-been. You can't be a has-been if you haven't even been. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's cruel. I think that's very cruel. Jenny, I'm not cruel. I don't mean to hurt you. I am, in fact, doing my best to make your last day in Hollywood a pleasant one. But you've got to help me. I'll be good. I really mean to be you're so patient with me and so kind. All right. But no more talk about acting or pictures. Understand? I understand. Now then, where are we? Sunset Boulevard. I said no more talk about pictures. This street, William, it's Sunset Boulevard. Oh. Well, that's good. We just passed through Beverly Hills, so that means the ocean isn't much too further and if we stay on Sunset. Hmm. What on earth is that man doing? What man? Oh, at the side of the road? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Looked like he was shaking his fist at us or something. No, no, he's got something in his hand. Oh, and there, there's a sign behind him. Maps to movie stars' homes. William. No. It's my last Jenny, day. Jenny, no. Now, besides, we've already passed him. And we'll drive out to the ocean. Look, and... William, there's a woman ahead there. She's selling them, too. I don't care if she's giving them away or if she pays you to take them or... Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. If you feel that way about it, then don't stop. I... I don't believe it. I mean it. You don't have to stop on my account. I've stopped on my account. You folks want a map? Over 400 names in a <laughs> This is a big start. Uh-oh. Aunt Lily. Well... Oh, all right. I'm usually fairly inventive. But you've caught me flat-footed, Willie. I, I don't understand. This is what you do for a living? We can discuss this another time, Willie. I just hope I haven't embarrassed you in front of your nice Miss Stewart. Hello, my dear. How do you do? My goodness, you are lovely, isn't she, Willie? Oh, just lovely. Standing out here in the sun like this every day after day, no wonder you're so tan. <laughs> Willie tells me that Mike Gordon's going to make a star of you. And I must say you're beautiful enough. Now, if you just have the talent to match, well, you, you, you make the grade, I'm sure. Oh, you're very nice, Miss Spring. But I'm afraid Mr. Gordon doesn't think I have much talent. Now, Jenny, don't. Now, you're just being modest. I know Mike very well, and I'll call him up and get the straight goods from him. Aunt Lily, oh, don't. Oh, that would be wonderful. Oh, no, no, not at all. I'm curious about you. After all... You and Willie. Miss Stewart is going back to Hooker, Oklahoma, on the evening bus. Oh, that's perfectly ridiculous. Now, why on earth would you want to go back to Hooker? I don't want to go, Miss Spring, but I don't have any money or any prospects of a job. Oh, and poor I... baby. Now, Aunt Lily, listen to me. My dear child, you haven't given our town a chance. So, uh, maybe you've had a few punches in the nose. That's part of the business. Pick yourself up and roll with the punch. You really think I should? I certainly do. Miss Stewart is going back to Hooker, Oklahoma, on the evening bus. I, Willie, what are you sputtering about? I have work to do, a lot of work, and I insist it must and will be. Miss Stewart will be on the evening bus for Hooker, and that is final. <laughs> Do you think you'll be comfortable here, dear? Oh, perfectly. It's such a lovely room, isn't it, William? Dandy room. Uh, Miss Spring, you're sure it's all right if I stay here just till I get my big break? Oh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, come along, William. Tear yourself away. William, I, I don't know how to thank you for all you've done. Believe me, I haven't done a thing. Come along now. I'll show you your little hideaway. Let me uh, know if you need anything, dear. Thank you. 
Now then, Willie, this way. Just a minute. Something wrong, dear? One or two things aren't exactly clear. Oh, I know. This enterprise of mine, selling maps to movie stars' home, bothers you, doesn't it? Uh, that's one of the two things. Mm. Why didn't you tell Mother or me? Oh, and let that wonderful town of Middleton know that Lily Spring wasn't everything they thought she was? Oh, no, Willie. I won't do it to them or to me. Next question. Spring Haven. All those people downstairs, your guess. Just guess. Just guess. Just guess. How long have they been visiting you? Well, now, let me see. The Menzies, the, the, the older couple, the ones who looked like something left over from Vaudeville. Uh -huh. They're uh, left over from Vaudeville. <laughs> Used to have a juggling act. Juggling act. Juggling act. Just guess. Just guess. Mm hmm. Then uh, <clears throat> Basil, the one who answers the door and phone and all, the, the one who looks like the butler. He's the butler? No, he just looks like that. <laughs> no, Basil's a fine old Shakespearean actor, just waiting for a break in pictures. How long has he been waiting for this break? Oh, 10 or 15 years? No longer than that. Things are clearing up in a cloudy sort of way. Then let me see. The others... Now forget are... the others. I expect they're all just... Just guess. Aunt Lily, don't worry about Middleton. Lily Spring is everything they think she is. Maybe even a little bit more. <laughs> Don, I hesitate to tell you that I saw the Warner Brother Technicolor picture, so this is love. Why is that, Francis? Oh, well, as soon as I mention Catherine Grayson as the star, will you... Oh, just... Catherine Grayson. Not only a lovely voice, but a lovely complexion. She uses Lux, you know. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> well, now, what's the picture all about, Francis? Oh, Don, it's based on the story of Grace Moore, and therefore is almost all song. Catherine sings 13 popular songs. An aria from Romeo and Juliet, Faust, La Boheme, plus a wonderful number entitled, I Wish I Could Shimmy Like My Sister Kate. Oh, that must have been from the time Grace Moore performed in a review and sang, First I Wiggle and Then I Waggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so right, Don. I understand Catherine was the one star considered for the role. Yes, her own background of musical training and achievements parallels that of Grace Moore. And one of these days, she may sing at the Met. And take 28 curtain calls like Miss Moore did after La Boheme. Oh, I wouldn't be at all surprised, Don. Catherine devotes six weeks of the year to the pursuit of her classical musical career. What a busy girl. Yet Catherine never neglects her Lux beauty care. Well, like so many stars, Catherine finds bathing with Lux very soothing, Don. When she sang at London's Palladium a couple of years ago, she took Lux along. And I understand she made a goodwill tour of South America recently with several cakes of Lux tucked in her fortnighter. Maybe as a goodwill gesture, she gave some away. Maybe she did, Francis. Wherever you go, take the generous bath size cake of Lux. You'll find it's a great pick-me-up after a warm summer day. And you'll like the way it leaves your skin smooth and glowing. For the beauty bath of the Hollywood stars, use Lux. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. the curtain rises on act three of Romance to a Degree, starring Joseph Cotton as William. The bus for Hooker, Oklahoma, left Hollywood on schedule that evening, as it did every evening for several weeks thereafter. But Jenny Stewart was never aboard. She was, rather, safe in the arms of Spring Haven, along with a score of other, <laughs> well, just guests. Among them, William Spring Smith, 
a young man more or less determined to complete his summer studies. And that was good, because if he were to complete them at Spring Haven, he would have to be more or less determined. Springhaven? Lily. No, no, no. Miss Spring isn't here just now. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, you know where I can reach her? Drive out Sunset, just past Beverly Hills. She'll shake her fist in your face. <laughs> She'll what? She'll be home in an hour. Oh. Oh, well, look, will you tell her that uh, Andrews of Mitchell and Andrews, you know, the dog act, tell her we'll be out later to put up with her for a while. Are you bringing the dogs? We can if Lily wants us to. I'll tell her. Uh -huh. Where was I? Oh, yes, yes. Characters in the Iliad were so skillfully drawn by Homer from Achilles through Agamemnon to Helen of Troy herself as to be timeless in their depth and scope. Hmm. Now then. Busy, William. Yes, Basil, busy. Ah, that's what I like to see. A young man busy at his work. Mm -hmm. The single-mindedness and dedication to purpose of the young mind. An inspiring thing for these old eyes to behold. Uh, one question, William. Uh, what is it, Basil? Uh, did Daryl Zanuck call? No. Jack Warner? No. Dory Sherry? No. Uh, I shall snub them all when next destiny deigns our paths entwine. You stay with it, William. Work. Let nothing deter you. Lose yourself in it. Lose yourself. And promise me this. If anyone keeps you from it, postpones your work in any way, send them to me. To me! Uh-huh. Willie, stop typing this instant. All right, Aunt Lily. Oh, well, now that's better. You're driving yourself too hard, you know. You've had the entire day to yourself, all alone with your work. I insist that you relax now. It's due tomorrow. Hmm? My critique on the Iliad, it's due tomorrow. Oh, that's nice, dear. Uh, listen, Willie, I have the most wonderful news. Oh, oh, you had some phone calls. I ran into Mike Gordon again today. You remember the agent who told Jenny to go back to Hooker? Well, anyway, I ran into him, and he agreed with me that anyone as beautiful as Jenny should have every chance to prove her talent. I can't remember all of them, but the last one was somebody with a dog act. Two names, somebody and somebody. They, they're coming out here. Uh, Willie, don't interrupt, dear. Mike set Jenny to read for a part tomorrow at the Empire Studios. Now, isn't that splendid? Two names, like uh, Zanuck and Sherry. Do they have a dog act? <laughs> I don't think so, dear. But the Empire is my old studio. And I'm going to call Leo Lethridge and put in a good word for Jenny. Does he have a dog act? Leo Lethridge is head of production for Empire Studio. Oh. I've already told Jenny. And she's that excited. Uh, who's coming here with what dog act? Well, maybe I got the names wrong. Really, Aunt Lily, I'm glad for Jenny and... You're nice to do all that for her, but my critique on the Iliad is due tomorrow. I've just got to get back to work. Oh, poor Willie, of course you do. And here I've been prattling on like an old woman. I'll go now, dear, and I promise I won't let a soul disturb you. That would be very nice. Aunt Lily! Aunt Lily! Shh! Willie's working! Did you tell him the news? Yes, and he's terribly excited about it. And I, I brought my volume of the Bard. Jenny and I will rehearse Shakespeare the entire night if necessary. Shakespeare's excellent for diction and interpretation. That's what Basil says. And we're doing that wonderful bit between Henry V and Catherine of France. Isn't there somewhere else you three could talk? <laughs> oh, well, what is it, dear? I... S uh, it bothers me when you people whispering over there. There's no way to rehearse either. Jenny must give full voice to this. Full. Yeah. 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 
I shall cue you at line... I shall cue you at line 205. Mm. Hello, William. Hello, Jenny. But dost thou understand thus much English? Canst thou love me? I cannot tell. Can any of your neighbors tell, Kate? I'll ask them. Come. I know thou lovest men. And at night, when you come into your closet, you'll question this gentlewoman about me. And I know, Kate, you will to her dispraise those parts in me that you love with your heart. Shouldn't she be... But, that? good princess, <laughs> mock me massively, the rather gentle princess, because I love thee cruelly. If ever I... Didn't she have more to say? I beg your pardon? Well, if you're trying to help Jenny, shouldn't you rehearse something where she has more to say? My dear young friend, this is a tour de force for Henry. I am Henry. I know, You but... mustn't interrupt, Willie. He's just trying to help me, will you? I'm sorry. I won't interrupt again. I'm sorry. I won't interrupt again. Oh, good heavens. We can't concentrate in here. Come along, Jenny, Lily. We've got work to do. Spring Haven was a focal point of culture on the Hollywood scene that night. Before the evening was over, Basil had organized a small repertory theater group consisting of Lily, the juggling menzies, the itinerant dog act, Basil himself in the lead, oh yes, and Jenny. And upstairs, a light burned long into the night, and the sounds of a typewriter could sometimes be heard over the deep Shakespearean tones of Basil and the intermittent yapping of the dog. William Spring Smith was late coming home the following afternoon. Ah, come in, William, come in. And welcome, forsooth. Welcome. Hello, Basil. Jenny home? Alas, she is home. A frail and dismal failure. She weeps even now in her quarters. She didn't get the part. I believe Leo Lethridge put it this way. Why don't you go back to Hooker, Oklahoma, like a good little doll? <laughs> poor Jenny. Indeed, poor Jenny. But she is young, Willie, and the young have resilience. I have not told her yet, but I intend to work with the trial until she's really ready. Give her the benefit of my long experience and my rather substantial talent. Maybe Mr. Lethridge is right. No one should be sentenced to Hooker, Oklahoma. <laughs> no matter how little talent they have, the small hamlet is no place for Jenny. It might be just the place for her. I, I think I'll go look in on her. had quite a blow, Willie. Basil told me. I'm sorry, Jenny. I, I don't want to cry in front of you, William. William can't stand tears, Aunt Lily. It's all right, Jenny. Isn't it, Willie? What kind of a part was it? I, I was supposed to be a small-town girl who wanted to be an actress, but didn't have any talent. And I just couldn't do it, William. I just couldn't. She just didn't feel it. Why not? Oh, William, you don't understand about acting and being an artist and all. The part just wasn't right for me. There'll be other parts, dear. Don't worry. Stop crying, Jenny. What? You heard me. Stop crying. Face a few realities. Oh, you're going to be cruel again. I can always tell. You shouldn't, Willie. Someone should. If Jenny can't play herself, she can't play anything. She's a small-town girl who wants to be an actress, but she doesn't have the talent for it. It's that simple. <laughs> Willie, she wants it so. Do you really want it, Jenny? Or are you just ashamed to admit to yourself and your friends back home that you couldn't make the grade out here? Please, 
please don't, William, don't. Because if that's true, you're not being fair to your friends or yourself. People, real people, Jenny, love you for yourself. Isn't that true, Aunt Lily? Yes. Yes, that, that's very true. I'm going back to Middleton tonight, Jenny. There's a bus at 7. So soon, Willie. I finished my last class today. I've got to get back. There's a lot of work before the college opens next month. How about it, Jenny? No, I won't go. I won't go because I'm going to show you William Spring Smith. I'll be a big star someday, and you're going to be phone. stuck. He's on the phone. Who? who? Leo Lethbridge in person. He's on the phone. You see, Mr. Smith, the head of production of Empire Studios wants to talk to me. No, 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 he doesn't, Jenny. He wants to talk to William. I don't know him. He, he wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk to him. I don't know him. Besides, I've got to pack. Oh, Lily. Mm. Speak to him. Make him understand. Willie. You don't want me to miss my bus, do you? Willie, he's called five times now. I really don't have time to talk to him, Aunt Lily. There must be some mistake anyway. Why would the head of Empire Studios want to talk to me? I don't know, dear, but he does. Oh. Answer it, Willie. Hello. Hello. This is Leo Lefford. Is Professor William Spring Smith in yet? This is he. Oh, well, I finally caught up with you. I want to talk to you, young man. We have a mutual friend, I believe. Who, Jenny? McComb at UCLA. Oh, Dr. McComb, yes, uh... I took some courses from him this summer. He referred your critique on the Iliad to me, Smith. I think it's a darn provocative idea. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Lefty. Well, he kicked the idea around a lot here at the studio, but yours is the freshest approach I've seen. I'd like to buy it from you. Oh, it's nothing I'd sell. It's just a paper I wrote. Well, I can make it even more attractive. We may want to go into production pretty soon, and I'd want you as technical advisor on the picture. Well, that's very nice, Mr. Lethbridge. But I'm leaving town tonight. I've got to get back to Middleton. Before the f- semester oh, starts. Now, 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 look, Smith. We'll arrange to get you a leave from your college. Dr. McComb and I have already discussed that. And as far as the money goes... Oh, I don't want to leave from the college. I like it there. But listen to me now. We'll make this a very attractive offer. Mr. Lethbridge, I appreciate everything you're saying, but I've got the pack now. If you want to use the paper, you go right ahead. Smith, I've dealt with some difficult people before. But... Thanks again, Mr. Lethbridge. Now, where did I put those shirts? William Spring Smith, did he say what I thought he said? And did you say what I thought you said back? I'm, I'm in an awful hurry, Aunt Lily. You really do love it back in Middleton, don't you? I think it's the best place in the world to live. Pardon me. Hmm? You, uh, read all the time, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, if you're not enjoying the scenery, you probably wouldn't mind if we changed seats, would you? Jenny. Hello, William. But Jenny, this... This bus goes to Hooker. I know. You decided to go back home. Like a good little doll. <laughs> I've decided a lot of things, William. Well, I'm glad you're going home. No? No, I'm not. I'm not glad you're going home at all. William! You're beautiful. William. You really are. You're beautiful. Maybe... Maybe I was wrong about you, Jenny. Oh, now, William, don't change on me now. Don't... Why, William... Oh, William. You kissed me. I was wrong about you, Jenny. You've got talent. (laughs) You... You've got a lot of talent. And you're not glad I'm going back to Hooker? Not with all that talent. (laughs) Will I... 
Well, I like it in Middleton, William. But, Jenny, you'll love it in Middleton. It's the best, best place in the world to live. In a moment, Joseph Cotton will return. You know how often you women snag a nylon in public and there's that run. Well, all you have to do if you're properly prepared and have sent for your parent to spare is open your handbag and take out a spare. Lever Brothers' parent to spare plan gives you three finest quality cannon nylons, a pair to wear, and a spare stocking for emergency. Isn't that a great idea? And you pay less for all three stockings than you usually pay for just a pair of nylons. Just one dollar for three lovely stockings that represent a dollar eighty-five value. You save eighty-five cents on every set. And the nylons themselves, their fifty-one gauge, fifteen denier cannons, are fully proportioned, full fashioned for perfect fit. And the shade goes with everything. To get your pair and a spare, all you do is send one dollar plus two Lux Flakes box tops. Include your stocking size and length and mail to Nylon Offer, Box 34, Albemarle, North Carolina. Remember, for the stocking plan of the century, your pair and a spare plan, write Nylon Offer, Box 34, Albemarle, spelled A-L-B-E-M-A-R-L-E, North Carolina. Now, here's Joseph Cotton. Well, Joe, as one of our well-established stars, uh, you ought to know some interesting Hollywood legends. Well, I suppose I do, but the most interesting thing about some of them there, that they are true. For instance, the one about nine out of ten Hollywood stars being Lux girls. That's a fact. I've played opposite them. And, Joe, who has the good fortune to play opposite you in your latest picture? Well, let's say that I have the good fortune to play opposite Gene Peters in a blueprint for murder for 20th Century Fox. Gene's awfully good. And are you playing one of those diabolically clever murderers you do so well? Don, what sort of a compliment is that? (laughs) I'm not a criminal this time. Now, what about your play for next week? As a matter of fact, we have a very unusual character in our heroine of next week. She's not exactly a criminal, but... Well, surely you remember one of 20th Century Fox's biggest screen hits, Leave Her to Heaven. I certainly do. A fine picture. And who will be your star? The lovely and talented actress, Joan Fontaine. Well, that will be worth hearing. Good night. Good night. Hi, there. Say, if you're anything like me, you woke up this morning feeling like you'd swallowed a handful of feathers. <laughs> Dentists put it more bluntly. They just call it morning mouth. Well, don't take morning mouth to work with you. Instead, take that wonderful, clean, fresh feeling that Chlorodent toothpaste gives you. You see, Chlorodent is a chlorophyll toothpaste. And Chlorodent gives you the full mouth freshening benefits of chlorophyll which no white toothpaste offers. Besides, no other chlorophyll toothpaste brightens your teeth as well as Chlorodent. Say. How about you trying Chlorodent toothpaste at our expense? Just buy the 69-cent size and we'll chip in the 43-cent size at no extra cost. Prove to yourself that Chlorodent leaves your mouth wonderfully fresh and clean. And if you don't agree, well, your 69 cents will be refunded. So buy Chlorodent. Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Summer Theater will present Joan Fontaine in Leave Her to Heaven. <laughs> Featured in our cast tonight were Shirley Mitchell as Jenny and Verna Felton as Lily. With John Daner, Ben Wright, Bibi Janis, Byron Kane, Barney Phillips, and Lawrence Dobkin. Polly Bear was the narrator. Romance to a Degree was written for the Lux Summer Theater by Kathleen Height and was directed by Norman McDonald. Lever Brothers Company unconditionally guarantees the quality and performance of Lux Toilet Soap, 
Lux Flakes, and Chlorodent Toothpaste for your money refunded. This is your host, Don Wilson, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Leave Her to Heaven, starring Joan Fontaine. Every Thursday evening, Lever Brothers Company brings you the Lux Video Theater. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. This is the CBS Radio Network.